the Pali word for meditation, bhavana, means to develop. We're trying to develop good qualities in the mind. We're not just sitting here watching things coming and going. We're realizing that the mind has lots of potentials, and it can change very quickly. So we want to watch out for that kind of change. We want to pr try to prevent it if it's going in the wrong direction. Of course, if it's going in the right direction, change is fine. It's the unexpected things, when you've made up your mind to do something good and all of a sudden it goes someplace else. That's what you've got to worry about. So this is one of the reasons why we develop mindfulness, the ability to keep something in mind. And alertness, noticing what you're doing while you're doing it. So you can try to figure out, when I do this, these are the results. When I do that, those are the results. If you're not really alert, you just go by vague memories, and it's really hard to learn anything clearly. So you want to be right on top of things as they're happening, so you can direct the mind in the right direction. Because the mind can be trained. It's not innately good, it's not innately bad, it's just changeable. And it's like it has many voices inside, so you try to use the good voices to train the voices that are not so good. Put your good intentions in charge. And once you've done that, again, you want to remember that, so you've got to develop your mindfulness so you don't forget. At the same time, when we're meditating, we're focusing on the breath. We're trying to make it comfortable, because if we're going to stay here in the present moment, it's like building a house. If the house isn't comfortable, you're not going to stay there. If the house is comfortable, you'd be happy to stay. So breathe in a way that feels good for the body right now, energizing if you're feeling tired. Relaxing if you're feeling tense. Give the mind a good place to stay so they can watch the changes that are going on inside and out and decide which changes should be encouraged and developed and which changes should be abandoned. Because the simple fact that things change doesn't tell you much, but the realization that some changes lead to suffering and some changes lead away from suffering, that gives you guidance. It gives you a standard against which you can measure your thoughts. Ask yourself, this thought that I'm thinking right now, where will it lead me? Is it something I should continue with, or is it something I should say goodbye to? When you're mindful, alert, and have a sense of well-being here in the present moment, it's a lot easier to make a good decision and stick with it. So when the mind changes, you're on top of the change. And if it's going to change in a way that's going away from your better, your better judgment, you have the strength and the ability to say no, and then to replace it with something better. We're not just sitting here passively accepting whatever arises, realizing we have good potentials inside, and if we develop them, they can lead us in a good direction. So we're trying to make the most of those potentials. As for the other potentials. Well, they're old leftover things from decisions you made a long time ago, old ways of thinking, old ways of, of acting, that you can now begin to see. They're really not all that skillful. Even though they may seem to be like old friends, they can, they can turn on you. So you just let them go. Some of them you can convert, others you just throw out of the committee entirely. This way the work of the mind gets done. And it gets done well, and it gets done with a sense of well-being. As John Sawat used to say, this is the best work there is. So treat your meditation with respect, and that way you're treating yourself, you're treating your mind with respect. Respect both for the good things it can do, and also a wary sense of respect for the dangers it can, the mind can have. So you can negotiate skillfully among those.